In this video, we're going to look at adding architectural symbols to your floor plan that you began in the previous video of this playlist. Architectural symbols are used to depict critical building information such as doors and windows to inform of navigation of proposed design spaces. Proposed room furnishings and accessories can also be included on floor plans to visualize the proportion or scale or the use of these spaces. AutoCAD has the ability to go through and download and import uh, two scale architectural symbols. These are referred to as blocks in CAD programs. This feature is similar to that of the warehouse in SketchUp, whereby you can import two scale furnishings and building features into your design. Importing blocks and libraries of blocks will save you an incredible amount of time. Symbols used are simply to emphasize the scale the use or features of the spaces, and so minimal line work and no tone is used to depict the symbol for greatest clarity. Window shown as an example in here is shown simply as two lines to indicate the thickness of the wall and one or two lines to depict the thickness of the pane of glass. Symbols used need to adhere to the VCAR standards which are available on the VCAA Visual Communication Design Technical Drawing Handbook, which is shown on screen at the moment. The, you want to focus on pages 33 to 35. This link will be available in the video description. Now, CAD blocks can be downloaded from cadblocks.net. This provides two scale blocks that can be added to floor plans or elevations. These are free and no sign up is required. What we want to go through and do and begin with is some door drawings. Notice with all the examples, um, there are more symbols areas than shown. And I suggest we, yeah, often we're going to go through and look at downloading and porting doors. Identifying where doors are required for your proposed floor plan and to see what style orientation door is required. Is it be a sliding door, a swinging door? Does it open from the left or from the right? However, these can be reflected later. We're going to begin with the interior doors and then we'll look at the exterior doors. There are two ways to deal with blocks uh, symbols. This video will focus on the easy method, which is best if you're only importing a handful of blocks from the set library. If you're importing a dozen or more, I suggest you watch a more detailed and advanced block library video. So what we want to go through and do is download the door plans rather than door elevations, noting that's from front on, but we're working from top down. That will depict the whole library that we'll be able to go through and download. And then simply down here, we'll have download CAD blocks. Clicking on that, it will download a zip folder. That shouldn't take too long to go through and download. And if I right click on this and I try and open with, it doesn't provide any options. So we make sure you go through and extract it first, and then you'll be able to open it with AutoCAD. Now I've already opened this up. And so you'll be able to notice that it's open as a separate drawing board. So these are all defining or um, uh, win oh, sorry windows, uh, doors. And so you'll have double doors, you'll have um, multiple variations and also multiple widths. The one we might be working with in this video will be this 900 wide door. So we'll be simply going through and selecting that. And then we'll be able to go control C or actually I might go right click and then clipboard, copy, house tutorial. I tend to like to put it out in the drawing board because I'm going to be pasting a few of these in. Then I'll right click and go clipboard and paste and clicking it. Sometimes it will be able to paste, other times it won't work. And so how to go through and rectify that was just right click again and then we'll go clipboard and we'll paste as block. And so now, therefore, we can uh, go through and paste this within our spaces. Now we'll go through and rotate it and reflect it. 
Um, I suggest when you're inserting blocks, make sure you're using um, the bottom left as your positioning and also, also turn on snap on. Now, doors are notorious in terms of the frame, which is depicted by these two shapes here. They're meant to be obviously the same thickness as at the wall. However, this has been designed by somebody else and I know that it's gonna be incorrect. So we can also go through and modify these blocks. So whereby we go into block editor and so other features or designs you might be importing, you might wanna remove certain areas of it or be going through and modifying it. And so in here, we're in the block editor, but I can go through and change it to home. And I'm just gonna make this a bit quicker and I'll make the length of the door frame correct size. So 110, and I might speed this area up with the video. Notice I cannot change this as yet, so I need to go through and explode it. So using the explode function, now I can modify it. Now what we wanna do is save our updated block. And so we're gonna go back to block editor. I'm making sure everything I've removed, um, I've trimmed everything I've wanted to remove. And I'm gonna go open save and then save new block. Otherwise it will override it. And so we'll call this new door. Go okay. Uh, I've already got new door, so new door two. Then once that's saved, I can close block editor. Obviously you'll notice that you're in the block editor workspace if the um, drawing board is a gray rather than the, 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 the black. This will be an old instant of the door, so I can remove that. Position to where I wanna be positioning these doors, so I'll put a door in here and one in here. And I wanna go door and then, sorry, insert recent blocks and it will open up as a palette and so notice that we've got uh, door two it's likely to be under the recent tab and I should be able to just click and drag that out as an instant there now I want to go through and rotate that and so I'll select that midpoint whoops try that again rotate yes I want to rotate that specify the base point, and I'm going to say that's going to be that line there, and it should polar tracking's working well. And then I'm going to position that roughly there, just so I can speed it up a little bit. And now I'm going to also position another example of it here. So I'm going to use mirror, select the object that we want to mirror, press enter. Specify first point of mirror line. Well, I'll mirror it off that line there. And specify the second point. Well, I can just do any point along there. And array source object. I want to say no. So thereby, we've got the positioning of our doors. Uh, Placement of doors is very important in a building as material and labor is very expensive. And so in Victoria, about $1,500 to $2,000 is the cost for every uh, meter squared. And so therefore you don't want dead spaces as they become very expensive. So if this door we positioned along the, um, the wall, potentially you have these really dead spaces at either end. Whereas positioning it up against the wall, we can maximize that space within there. Um, we want to go, note that you want your doors to swing into the space and not away from you. So think about the doors that you have at home and the direction that they swing. They'll often swing into the room and then you're closing the door behind you. If the floor plan isn't to the correct scale, this will need to be completed before proceeding on to the rest of the design. 
as it can cause a very big knock-on effect, causing a lot more work and issues faced than the layout. Dimensioning and scale of each imported symbol will otherwise be affected. This will be really obvious when you import a block and if it's a lot larger or smaller than expected, um, go through and make those updates. So doors will approximately be around about 800 to 900 wide. Your first block is now in place. Obviously, I'd want to go through and just remove these uh, portions of the wall as I've got shown here. I suggest you now finalize the layout of the room by importing other symbols that are needed before proceeding onto the windows. This is just really helpful to then um, best position windows along the exterior wall. So if I put the windows in first, maybe I'd be positioning this window too closely to the, um, the, the bedroom sort of suite and side tables. So think about the view or scenery or vista outside, potentially the lounge room. Be thinking about also screening off for privacy. So positioning a window in here would mean if somebody's at the front door, they'd be able to see all the way into the bedroom. However, positioning a window over in this location allows for privacy, but also allows for natural lighting to come into the space. Also think about rooms that potentially don't need to have windows, so things like pantries. Also remember solar tracking. So we know that the sun rises on the east and then it pans around and um, sets in the west. So limiting windows along the eastern and western faces or walls will minimize the glare and direct sunlight deep within our building. So that's probably identified. This window here is probably not gonna be best suited because if we're sitting on the couch or even making some dinner over here, late in the day when it's really quite hot, especially in summer, you potentially got direct sunlight all the way to the sink, which we probably don't want. So finalize using the blocks, making sure we're removing certain sections of the walls that no longer need to be included. Um, along with adding the windows and then the next step we're going to introduce you to layers in AutoCAD. Thanks.